Fasten your seatbelts, folks. It's pole position for Ferrari's very own Carlos Sainz Jr. at the Italian Grand Prix. He just edged out Max Verstappen, shaving off a mere 13 thousandths of a second. Sainz's partner in speed, Charles Leclerc, is not too far behind in third position. We've also got the young Brit, George Russell, showing his mettle with a surprising fourth place for Mercedes, ahead of Red Bull's Sergio Perez. But it wasn't all smooth sailing for everyone, Lewis Hamilton had a tough ride, only just making it through to Q3. Then there's Sainz, who pulled off a stunning final lap, snatching the pole from Verstappen. Ferrari must be over the moon, securing their home race's front row. But let's not forget Verstappen and Red Bull, they are not one to back down without a fight. Certainly gives us plenty to look forward to in the race. Greetings, speedsters. This is your host, Enzo, steering the conversation. And I'm William, here to provide some insightful pit stop chatter. We're bringing you the action from the world of Formula One on the F1 Motor Fever podcast. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications, so you never miss a beat. Off we go. Let's talk tyres, shall we? At the Italian Grand Prix, all 20 drivers in Q1 were strapped with hard compound tyres. The stage was set, the sessions were tense, and the track was rife with anticipation. Oh definitely, it was almost like a chess match with each driver calculating their best move. Track limits caught some drivers out, didn't they? Indeed, William. We had the championship leader, Max Verstappen, flying to the top of the lap board, only for his time to be swiftly deleted due to a small but crucial track limit violation at the second Lesmo. Even the seasoned Fernando Alonso had his time removed for the same reason. True that, but Verstappen's second attempt was quick enough to snag the fastest time in the session, with his Red Bull teammate, Sergio Perez, not too far behind in second. You're right, William. And just when you thought the drama was over, we saw the reigning champion, Lewis Hamilton, forced to fit a second set of hard tyres in the final minutes. He was teetering on the edge, but managed to improve his position, saving him from an early exit. It was a thrilling start indeed, Enzo. Looking forward to the ensuing action. Speaking of tyres, it reminds me of this vintage tyre collection I stumbled upon at a garage sale last weekend. There were these early 20th century bicycle tyres that had the most intricate treads I've ever. Ah, Enzo, a fascinating detour indeed, but perhaps we should steer back onto the track of the Grand Prix. My apologies, got a bit carried away there. Right you are, William. Let's get back to the high-speed action. Moving on to the final minute, we saw Valtteri Bottas, Lance Stroll, and the two Alpines of Pierre Gasly and Esteban Ocon in a precarious position. In a thrilling turn of events, Bottas and Piastri maneuvered their way out of the drop zone. Yes, and unfortunately Zhu Guanyu, along with the two Alpine drivers, ended up being eliminated. That's right, William. The second phase of qualifying was then interrupted by a race control announcement. Both Ferrari drivers, Leclerc and Sainz, were under investigation for potentially exceeding the maximum lap time. That could have serious implications on their positions, couldn't it? Absolutely, William. We'll have to wait and see how that turns out. But pausing for a moment here. I can't help but reflect on the sheer drama, uncertainties and fierce competition that define Formula One. Our beloved listeners, don't you just find it fantastic? The heart-stopping moments? The nail-biting tension? There's nothing quite like it, is there? How are you all finding these updates? Feel free to share your thoughts with us. And, of course, if you're enjoying the content, don't forget to show some love. We absolutely relish bringing these updates to you and hope you're enjoying them as much as we are. Thanks for tuning in, and let's get back to the action. Let's delve into the second phase of qualifying, where the top 15 drivers were required to run solely on medium compound tires. A tactical move to balance speed and durability, isn't it, Enzo? Spot on, William. And it was none other than Verstappen who set the early pace with 1 minute and 21.035 seconds. But his teammate, Perez, lagged nearly four-tenths of a second behind after his first push lap. Indeed. However, Albon didn't disappoint, outdoing Perez by a tenth to claim the second spot. And then came the Ferraris. Their first timed laps were robust, with Sainz stealing the top spot, just four hundredths of a second quicker than Verstappen. Meanwhile, Leclerc secured third place behind them. Seems like Ferrari is making a statement, eh, Enzo? Looks like it, William Turner. A surprising turn, though, was Mercedes. 
they were genuinely at risk of not progressing into the third phase of qualifying. That's a rare sight, isn't it, Enzo? Absolutely, William. They must have been somewhat relieved when George Russell's first lap put him sixth. But their relief was short-lived when Hamilton could only manage 12th, a tenth away from the safety of the top 10. So, we've got some tense moments coming up, folks. Stay tuned. As the teams prepared for their final runs in the second session, Hamilton found himself in a rather unusual spot, the bottom five. He was accompanied by Hulkenberg's Haas, Lawson, Logan Sargent and Bottas. Hold on a moment, Enzo. It's not often we see Hamilton in such a position, is it? Not at all, William. You're spot on. It was indeed a surprising sight. And in the final three minutes, all 15 cars chose to head out together, all equipped with a fresh set of tyres. That must have been a sight to see, all of them racing against time, not just against each other. Absolutely. Everyone successfully reached the timing line to earn a final flying lap, although it was a close call for the last cars leaving the pits. Hamilton managed to improve his time, as did Leclerc, who was the fastest until Verstappen snatched the top spot by a mere four hundredths of a second. That's the thrill of Formula One for you, isn't it, Enzo? Every hundredth of a second counts. And speaking of thrills, it seems Norris had quite the nerve-wracking situation there. Indeed, William. Norris barely avoided falling into the drop zone by just 0.013 seconds. It was a close shave. And despite improving on their final laps, both Tsunoda and Lawson were knocked out in 11th and 12th positions. Hulkenberg, too, didn't make it past 13th. Bottas and Sargent found themselves in the bottom two, ending the second phase of qualifying on a rather disappointing note. Now, it was time for the all-crucial third and final phase of qualifying, where the top 10 drivers could only use the softest tyres available. Verstappen took the lead, ahead of his teammate Perez, setting the benchmark at 1 minute and 20.631 seconds, even as he dipped a wheel into the gravel at Rogia. And Perez was trailing Verstappen by almost three-tenths of a second, wasn't he, Enzo? That's correct, William. But the real show stealer was Sainz, who set the provisional pole time with 1 minute and 20.532 seconds, just three hundredths of a second ahead of his teammate Leclerc. And the Tifosi must have erupted at that point, eh? Ferrari taking the lead. Oh, absolutely. The grandstands were alive with cheers. But amidst this, there was a shuffle in the Red Bull camp. Perez found himself demoted to the sixth place, surpassed not only by Albon but also by Russell's Mercedes. Meanwhile, the two McLarens of Norris and Piastri trailed behind Perez. The final phase was indeed a thrilling spectacle, living up to the Formula One spirit. After a brief return to the garage for final preparations, Leclerc ventured out first, followed by Verstappen and Sainz. Leclerc was quicker than Verstappen in the first sector, but the Red Bull made up for it in the second. Leclerc managed to jump into provisional pole, but Verstappen pipped him by half a tenth. And then it all came down to Sainz, didn't it, Enzo? Yes, it did, William. All of Ferrari's hopes hung on Sainz's shoulders. And boy, did he deliver, beating Verstappen by just 0.013 seconds to snatch pole position. The grandstands erupted into cheers. Ha ha ha, I bet there was an absolute party in the Ferrari garage. Oh, I'm certain of it. And the celebrations were only amplified when the stewards announced that there would be no further action against the Ferrari drivers for exceeding the maximum lap time in Q1. Sainz was therefore confirmed on pole, with Verstappen and Leclerc trailing in second and third, respectively. Ha ha, I'm trying to picture Verstappen's face when he heard the news. Oh mate, the look on his face must have been priceless. Ha ha ha. Probably something akin to how Norris looked when he dropped Verstappen's trophy that one time. Ha ha ha, oh yes. That was a sight to remember, wasn't it? Absolutely. Poor Norris, dropping the trophy and Verstappen's face. Those are two memories that will surely live on in Formula 1 history. Ha ha ha. Now, let's run down the rest of the final grid, shall we? Following the top three, we had Russell in fourth place, leaping ahead of Perez who ended up on fifth. Albon secured the sixth spot on the grid for Williams. Quite a mix there, Enzo. And how did the McLarens fare? Well, William, the McLarens of Piastri and Norris were split by Hamilton, who secured the eighth place. Norris concluded in ninth, followed by Alonso rounding out the top ten. Quite a lineup. What about the forthcoming Grand Prix? Ah, the Italian Grand Prix. That's one we are all looking forward to, a classic in the calendar. One can only wonder what drama it will unfold this year. 
Indeed, Enzo, the anticipation is palpable. After all, each race writes a new chapter in the glorious history of Formula One. William, I know you've been trawling through social media. What's the latest in the fan chatter? Well, Enzo, we have an interesting discussion sparked by a comment from user Joven Milik 97 who quoted Max Verstappen responding to Lewis Hamilton's statements about teammates. Verstappen said, maybe Lewis is a little jealous of my current success. I think it's hard for Mercedes to deal with a loss after all these years of winning so much. Ah, a bit of sparring between the drivers, eh? Yes, and it seems to have stirred up quite a discussion. User Bouncer Breadstick said, this thing of journalists asking Lewis about Max, then reporting to Max to tell him Lewis's answer and having him react to that, and vice versa, is, well, quite silly. It happens like every other week. It's like kindergarten. Ha ha, that's one way to put it. Indeed. Neat underscore Petit chimed in with a humorous comment about the media's role, saying, cut to Will Buxton looking serious, pensive, perplexed. Good old Buxton. User holding on one also expressed their distaste for the media-fueled drama, saying, yep, bickering by proxy fueled by the media who just want some content, and it's getting tiresome. I can see how some fans may feel that way. And user Solomon G added, there's really nothing incorrect about either statement. They are both just super unnecessary. It's always interesting to see these perspectives from the fan community. There's certainly a lot of opinions out there, Enzo Watts. Finally, this is the gave an amusing warning, saying, not a good idea to check out F1 Twitter today. Ha ha ha, perhaps we'll heed that advice, William. Well, there you have it folks. Another episode of F1 Motor Fever podcast in the books. We've had a good natter about the previous race and all its highlights. Remember to engage with us, we love to hear your thoughts and comments. And do make sure to share our podcast with your friends and fellow Formula One enthusiasts. Click subscribe and ring that notification bell, you wouldn't want to miss out on our daily discussions, would you? That's right, Enzo. We're here to keep you company at 15 and 19 o'clock sharp every day. And of course, a big shout out to our technical wizards behind the scenes, Felipe and Vicente. You guys make this all possible. Now, I don't want to give too much away but we've got some really exciting stuff coming up so keep those ears peeled. Absolutely, William, we're looking forward to the next time we meet. But for now, we'll leave you with our usual sign-off. Remember, pedal to the metal, keep your gaze on the road, our channel's content is pure gold. Play that vignette.